Hi, this is Steve Draper in my workshop here in Bellevue. This is an update to the video I did on the, on the first two jigs and fixtures for Lesson 10 for the Shopsmith Mark 4, 7, 520 self-study course. And specifically on this drill press support jig. And I made an error yesterday when I did the drawing up here for the angle. I want to go over that with you. So up here yesterday, I drew it this way. The angle is uh, actually in the opposite direction. And it was cut correctly, but I just drew it long, wrong, incorrectly here. So the angle actually goes in this direction right here. So that's how what the correct shape is. Now, somebody had a question on this one and a half degree angle, what I'm talking about. Here on the table, when you tilt the table, when it's level, it says zero. It doesn't say 90. So I tilt it one and a half degrees to the right here to do the cut. So up here on the drawing, the, where's the, the somebody said, well, where's the one and a half degrees? Well, if we look right here at this triangle here, okay, this little angle right in here, that's the one and a half degree angle. Now, on the stock itself, that angle there is going to be 88.5 degrees. So I just want to clarify that for some of you that had some questions. And then also, I want to actually go through and demonstrate how to use this jig, which I forgot to do in that first video. And of course, this is used for drill press mode. And we're going to put our table tilted like we want to go into drill press position. Lock that in place. Now this fits right here on this mount here. And then the other end slips right down on the carriage. That's what this is for, is to sit down on there. And then you want to pull this firmly in this direction and then lock it in place. And then we go ahead and position our motor uh, the correct distance we want to have away from there. And uh, I'll put my drill chuck on there you can, so you can see that. So here I have a half inch drill bit with my drill chuck. So here's the drill chuck which goes on here, which we lock in place. And we put our drill bit in. that position and I'm not going to do all three now I just need to have it stay so it doesn't come out and then I usually want to have it about that far away from the table approximately when I'm done now I lock the table in place so now Dottie's going to come over here and help me raise this up into vertical position because I don't have the lift assist And I think we're ready to do that. So here we are here. Now I'll put my table, I should have put that actually in earlier. Now it's a little bit harder. Should have put that down before I put the table up, but we got it now. Okay, so you can see that the support is here to support the table. Now, I, now, see that fell. So that's the next step we have to do before we uh, finalize this. Because I want to make I'm going to release the carriage lock. Let the table actually weight fall right down on it. Now it's not going to fall out. 
and now I will lock my carriage lock. So that keeps the table from slipping down when you have, when we're pushing down on it. And sometimes if you're doing some uh, mortising actions or other, uh, that table could tend to slip. And so that's why we put this in here. But really the best reason to have it here is so it keeps this right at mid chest level, which is the perfect height for you. And that's what we did to when we calculate the length on it. So that's the end of this addendum. That's all I wanted to cover in this one. Thanks for watching.